why quitting marijuana was the best decision I ever made in my entire life. I'm really excited to share this one with you because it was something that was really intimidating for me and scary to begin on this journey. I didn't want to do it. I had a lot of resistance and I took a leap of faith on myself. I took a leap of faith on life and what I thought life wanted for me. And I also took a leap of faith on those close to me that gave me advice on maybe, hey Joel, maybe weed isn't the best thing for you. So I started smoking weed uh, right out of high school. Uh, I had tried it once in high school and actually it became a really traumatic experience. I had been saving the weed. Uh, I never even got to smoke it because the person that we went to to help you know, teach us how, he packed the bowl too tight so we couldn't even get high. But we were too stingy to let just throw away the weed so we're like, oh, we have to save it. And we were passing it around different houses and it just so happened it was my turn. My dad found it, got super pissed, and kind of my identity, my social life, who I thought I was, really started to kind of disappear. And once, as soon as I got out of high school, I was like, you know what, I'm free. I'm done with high school. I'm, you know, I'm going to college here. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm I'm a free man, so what did I do? I hit up some buddies that I used to, to be honest, judge because they used to smoke weed. I'm like, hey guys, can I smoke weed with you? They said, of course, because you know, weed smokers are quite generous. <laughs> Went to their house and just got blazed out of my mind. I remember taking a huge rip of the bong, and I'd never taken a bong rip before, so I didn't know that you know, the more you suck, the more <laughs> freaking smoke comes out, and I was just coughing and gagging and all that stuff, but that's what she said. I was high as a kite, went to Taco Bell, drove which was crazy and i just remember it was just like it was, it was a crazy experience and from then on i was hooked i started to work at jimmy john's and we would smoke out of the freezer and in the back and uh, that's really when my weed started to take off uh, once i got into college that's when things kind of went full send like a lot of people on my floor smoked and so we had a good smoking crew i went to uw madison which is a highly rated academic school so the fact that all these people i was surrounded with that were very smart and intelligent were smoking weed i was like oh, this is so much different than I thought it was. When, when I was in high school, the people that smoked weed were usually the kids that didn't get good grades, that didn't do well. And these are, I mean, it was quite the opposite. So I was like, oh, okay, so weed is now cool, it's acceptable. Um, actually, I'm even higher value now because I do it. And as time went on, I just slowly remember being more and more hooked on it. I, I wanted it more and more, I needed it more and more. I would do anything to get it, and I would start to only look forward to getting high. Uh, I had great memories, I'm not gonna lie. They were some of the best moments in my life Life. I can't really remember them because I was so high, but I just have I have glimpses of it being really special, and that's okay, right? Like there is, I think with any substance, there's a period of awesomeness, and that's okay to acknowledge, right? Now what happened is that awesomeness didn't last because of consequences that started to happen within my life. Uh, my grades were not doing well, and I was lying about them because I didn't want to admit that I was, you know, not doing so well. I actually had like a two eight five, which is like actually okay. Like it wasn't like. I was in the complete shitter, but I went into school telling everyone I was going to be a dentist. So to get <laughs> to get into dentistry school, you have to have like a three nine minimum, and there's no way I was going to get that. But I kept that lie going because I was too prideful and too uh, embarrassed to even admit that I was, you know, not doing well in school. Uh, because in high school, I did do well in school without really having to try. So fast forward, freshman year ends, awesome year. Uh, I come back for the summer. I'm smoking pretty much regularly. Uh, exercising a lot with my good friend from high school so uh, I was keeping in shape and I was what you call a functional stoner so what a functional stoner is is someone that can get through life and to, to a degree and you know hold down a job uh, have relationships to a degree and it doesn't really destroy them at first <laughs> and that's what I was so I still had friends I still had a job um, and I was still having fun but what I noticed over the summer is I was starting to have some consequences I got a couple drinking tickets uh, I got in trouble on a vacation because I was smoking weed too late and I woke up the owner of the house and they were super pissed so it was pretty embarrassing and um, you know they invited me to the house and I totally just blazed bud and disrespected them so so part of my amends is not smoking weed anymore so I get back into sophomore year and what's great about sophomore year is that we had our own place I didn't have to uh, live in the dorms anymore so we could smoke whenever we wanted uh, we had bongs everywhere different pieces all my roommates smoked. We all smoked together, which was great. And uh, one of our guys even dealt, so we got a little discount on weed. And we would just smoke every single night when we got back from 
studying <laughs> and what I was starting to have some problems with is that they were all doing well like they were all getting their grades uh, purely a fact that they just were smarter than me and one of the, my roommates was actually really intelligent so he was getting like a 4.0 he was uh, one of the he was the number one biomed student in the University of Wisconsin which is a big deal because there's a lot of smart people that are studying engineering there and I was confused because I was getting like a two, two nine. I was getting two eight. I was failing classes and I was like, what the heck's going on? Like, I should be as smart as these guys. And that started to even build more insecurity. So come Christmas break, you know, I go home, I come back, we're partying all for two, like two weeks straight. We take acid. And what acid does is it reveals to you <laughs> who you think you are. <laughs> and I just remember looking in the mirror, which you're not supposed to do, and feeling absolutely empty, absolutely nothing. And I thought going into the day, I was gonna be feeling high as a kite, right? Not even close. And that was the start of my mental health journey. So afterwards, I actually went to a psych ward. I stopped smoking weed, stopped drinking, stopped taking Adderall, and stopped obviously doing drugs and Molly and all that stuff. Yeah, I didn't know I had depression. I didn't even think that was a real thing. I thought it was just kind of a word. Uh, wow, I have a, lo a lot of anxiety. I didn't think I had anxiety either. and so. What happened is I got clean, I got into the psych ward, I came home for a little while, and then I went back to school. I went back to a music school, uh, not the UW anymore. And I went sober, of course. What happened though is I got a job, because my parents were like, they said, okay, if you're gonna you know, be in college still, you need to have a job. And what I found was that you know, the jobs didn't make a lot of money, and I was working the night shift. So I started to sell weed, I sold weed to my fraternity, that's how it started. And uh, I was like, wow, this is a quick way to make money. Fast forward a couple years, I was still dealing my mental health hadn't gotten better, it gotten worse. I was smoking all the time. I was absolutely a shell of a person. The people I was hanging around with were not great. I had lost contact with all my friends, almost all the relationships I ever had. Uh, and I kept doing it in the guise of, I'm building a music career, right? Like, I have a bigger purpose. Really though, it was that was an excuse to continue smoking weed. And I really got into dabbing, which is concentrates. And that's really when I started to say, oh no, because I couldn't get high off weed anymore. And the dabs, I was starting to build a tolerance to that too. So I lived in Madison, Wisconsin still, and weed was not legal. So my thing was like, oh my God, like the only way I'm gonna get weed is if I move to California or Colorado or something, and I was too afraid to even, or inexperienced to even think about possibly making a move. So I panicked and I just started smoking even more. And what happened is that life got really dark really quick. As I've told you guys before, I was selling and I got robbed a lot of money, a lot of weed, a lot of dabs. Uh, someone broke into my house while I was at work one day and they took a, a backpack full of stuff. Uh, and it was a nice backpack too. So I also lost a, a great backpack. And that's when I realized finally I had a problem. But lo and behold, you know weed, it's very addicting. And even though I was facing such severe consequences, I kept dealing. I'm like, okay, I justified it to myself. I said, okay, I need to make some money. I'm just gonna deal to my friends. And what happened is all those friends I dealt with knew <laughs> that I had gotten robbed. So they're like, oh, he's not gonna do anything. Let's rob him too. So I got robbed even more <laughs> after that. And I say got robbed. Um, not in a victim mentality at all. Like, like I deserved it. I was selling weed. I was hanging out with weird people and it's like obviously obviously I was gonna face consequences so it was a higher power universes designed for me for that to all happen because I believe it didn't want me to continue smoking weed it saw more potential in me and it knew that I wasn't gonna reach that potential if I was still smoking weed all the time so I finally decided to quit one night after I got in trouble by the police for having weed on me and I would just remember so I was at a park in my car and I had a bowl I had a grinder thankfully I didn't have like a pound of weed with me and so Sometimes I would drive around with a huge bag of weed. So I was smoking and they came and I, I had this like spray, it's called Osium. So I sprayed that everywhere in my car so it, it didn't smell anymore. He comes up, he's like, hey, what you doing? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm uh, just hanging out using the Wi-Fi because it connected to the Wi-Fi for the, like the main building. And he's like, it was funny because I had a bottle of that Source Perrier sparkling water. And he goes, are you drinking? And I was like, what seems to be the officer problem? I am not actually officer. <laughs> and I felt so proud and like, look what I just got away with. So he's like, all right, man, I just gotta write you a warning. I'll be right back. You can't be here after 10. And he comes back, hands me the warning and he goes, all right, man, have a good night. Turns around to walk away and he goes, is that weed? And I go, fuck, <laughs> busted. And I said, yes, you know, I have weed on me. And being in a very paranoid state and never having gotten in trouble with weed before, 
I started to panic, and I was like, oh my gosh, he knows I've been dealing. He's going to bring SWAT, the SWAT team. Uh, they, I started deleting messages. I deleted my dealer's number. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm in so much trouble. And in that moment, when he came back and said, all right, here's your smoking ticket, um, he took the weed and obviously left. In that moment, I said, okay, wow, the universe has given me another chance. I am not going to waste this one. I'm not going to waste this opportunity. Because right before I got robbed, I had said a big prayer to the universe. I said, hey, what happened was I lost my dealer phone and I thought someone had took it. I thought the cops had it. I, I was so paranoid and stressed and anxious. And I said, okay, universe, if you help me get out of this, I will stop dealing weed. The universe helped me get out of it and I kept dealing weed. And that's why I think some of the consequences came from the robbery. So I knew that I didn't have many options left or many chances. So I quit. I finally quit. And again, it was the best decision I ever made. That was the war story. Stay tuned for part two coming up where I'm going to say why it was such a good idea and all the benefits that have come from it. If you can relate to my story and are possibly in the situation that I was in or something similar and or you're just tired of smoking weed and just wasting your life, well, then that's what I'm here for. I do coaching and I help people get sober from marijuana quickly, efficiently, and so they don't go back and use again. And if they do, they start to see the consequences real clearly and get back on track. So if you're out there and you're struggling with weed and you're struggling to quit and you've tried before and it's just something's not clicking, maybe you're lacking accountability or you get a few days and you slip back. So for $20, you can schedule a 45 minute call with me and we can dive into your history, who you are, your current life situation, and how to quit weed fast and efficiently. As long as you're willing to show up for yourself and do the work, you can absolutely do this and you can absolutely transform your life and have a life beyond your wildest dreams. I've said this before, I didn't believe that when people were told me that. I was like, no way, my life's so bad. Today is a completely different situation. I'm in Mexico City, <laughs> I'm having the time of my life in a beautiful place with beautiful people and I never would have been able to get out here and have the courage to get out here or the sanity or the financial resources if I hadn't gotten sober. So whatever your dream is for you, I wanna help you get there and I know you can do it with the right support guidance and mindset. So schedule a call with me down below and comment down below what your experience has been and your dark night of the soul. I know we all have our war stories and as painful as they are, it's great to be able to look back and see how far we've come. I look back at that and I almost talk about it like it's a movie. There's no emotional attachment anymore because it's so far in the past and I've changed so much. And now I'm so grateful for it because I get to talk to you about this experience right here, right now and be able to make these videos to help you quit weed. So guys, have a great one. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.